welcome back to another tutorial. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys a really insane slide effect that will take your videos to the next level. If you guys wanna see more tutorials, make sure you guys drop a like down below and comment what other tutorials you guys wanna see me do. Other than that, let's get into After Effects. There's gonna be two points that you guys wanna make sure that you guys have. You guys wanna have make sure you have a marker for the actual shot. Then you guys wanna make sure you guys have a marker where you want the build up to start. So obviously right before the shot, it slows up and this is where we're gonna be doing the slide effect. The first thing you wanna do to, for the slide effect is you wanna click on your clip. You wanna split that clip into two and then you wanna split this right here. Now on this clip, you wanna actually duplicate it. So you wanna control C, control V and this is where we're gonna be doing the cutout. And this composition is actually 30 FPS and this clip is 60 FPS. And for for rotoscope, what you want to do is you want to right click, go to new, put down a, a null object, split that null object up to line up with that clip. The next thing you want to do is you want to highlight the clip and the null object, right click, go up to pre-compose, make sure it's on move all attributes, click OK, clean this up so all of my OCD fans will be happy with me. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to be cutting out this character. So we're going to click on it, go up to your roto brush right here, double click on it, and then it's going to pop up this window where we're going to be able to cut out the character. Next thing you want to do is you want to make sure you're on the first frame of the cutout for the build up. You want to make sure that the first frame is pretty good and roto brush 2.0 will try to do it best to copy it throughout the frames if you don't know how to rotor brush it's pretty simple all you got to do is just kind of hover over the character that you want to cut out if you have parts that you don't want if you hold alt and drag over it'll do it in red and it'll cut it out if you want to make the brush bigger all you got to do is hold control and click and it'll make it bigger and i'll see you guys in a second after we cut out this character once you have your character all cut out on the first frame, now we're going to be able to go to the next frame and see how well it does when it cuts out. And as you can see, it doesn't do a very good job. So you might have to go frame by frame cutting out the character. So all you got to do is just keep going to e each frame. You want, you, you can do so. Frame and make sure that the character is cut out properly. So I'm going to go frame by frame and I'll see you guys when I'm done. Once you cut out the character and you get rid of the background layer of the duplicate, you should have just the character cut out something like this. If you want to fine tune your rotoscope settings, all you have to do is click on your actual cutout, come over here, and I'd, for the feather, I do right around 8. For the shift edges, I usually do about negative 20. And for reduced chatter, I usually do 20. So from here, we're going to turn back on the background layer. From here, we're going to click on our cutout. We're going to control C, control V. And we're not going to touch the top one, just the bottom one. We're going to go over to our effects and presets. We're going to type in offset. Offset. Woo, 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 woo. Grab the offset, put it on our bottom cutout. We're going to go over to our offset, click shift center two. We're going to click on this little stopwatch to put up a keyframe. And to get to that, we're just going to click on that. And then we're going to click U for our, on our layer into our timeline. A couple frames from the end of it. <laughs> from here, we're going to go over to our settings. We're actually just going to have this character slide over like this. And we're just going to keep dragging it because we want to have it kind of swipe through a couple times. And there's no exact setting that you need. It's kind of just how many times you want the character to slide through. For this keyframe, you want it to actually have it line up exactly where it is. So we just want to put it to like right there. We're going to highlight those two keyframes. We're going to click F9 for easy ease. And you should have something like this. Now, from here, what we're going to be able to do is on our cutout, we're actually going to click on it. We're going to go over to our effects and presets. We're going to be typing in directional blur. Put that onto our cutout where it's going to be sliding. So on our slide layer, what we're going to be able to do is go over to direction and we're going to put this to 90. And then for our blur length, we're going to click this little stopwatch to put a keyframe. We're going to click U on our timeline twice to bring up those keyframes. And from here, we're going to have it on zero at the start. Go ahead in our timeline, just a tap, and then we're gonna, we're gonna bring up the blur length. Two is about 13. We're gonna go a couple frames before the end of it. We're gonna put another keyframe right here, click that. And then on this, we're gonna put it back to zero. From here, now we're gonna add in our, our own effects. So if we right click, click new, go over to adjustment layer, make sure that's above all our stuff. Go over to our effects and presets, type in transform, grab that transform, put it on our adjustment layer. We're gonna keyframe the scale and position. Click U on our timeline to bring it up. Values are the same right there, but we're gonna go a couple frames ahead and we're gonna zoom in. And then we're going to make sure that the you can put the position wherever you want. We're going to put it like something like this, where it's just the characters right in the middle. From here, we're going to highlight the top position keyframes. Click F9 to easy ease them. Go over into our graph, right click, go to speed graph. 
click on our graph hold shift and drag both these lines over to the left and we're gonna do the same thing for the scale keyframes same, f9 same. go over to our graph but click different. on the two thingamajigs drag them over like that so we have the same graph where it comes in really quick and then eases out and then on our shot we're gonna highlight those last two keyframes Control c Control v and then we're going to go ahead in our timeline and grab the first two keyframes where it's the original of values, control C, control V. And then we're just going to highlight those positions and we're just going to do the same exact graph, cut something like that. So that is the basics of how you do the slide transition. If you want to take it to the next level, if you want more slide transitions, all you got to do is on your slide cutout. If you control C, control V and grab that bottom layer and drag it a couple frames farther in our timeline, it's going to have more of the cutouts going on and then at the end they'll all just come in funneling in like this so from here now that you know how to do the basics now you can put in your own creativity you can put in your glows you can put your flashes your colors your overlays if you're still having trouble or have questions i'll be leaving a more in-depth project file down below inside my pay hip if you guys want to go check that out so that brings us to the end of the slide effect transition if you guys enjoyed make sure you guys drop a like down below if we hit 500 likes i'll drop another tutorial thank you guys for watching consider watching these two banger videos right here and i'll catch you guys later